Good evening, everybody, and welcome all of you to this live program at Orthopedic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Dr. Luki Lacheta from Berlin, Germany. Dr. Lacheta is an assistant professor in the Department of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery at the Center of Musculoskeletal Surgery in Charité University Hospital of Berlin, Germany. After his medical school at the University of Bern in Switzerland, Dr. Lacheta underwent high surgical training at the Department of Orthopedic Sports Medicine, Technical University of Munich in Germany with Professor Andre Imhoff. And subsequently a fellowship at the Stedman Philippon Research Institute in Vale, Colorado, United States. His practice focus is shoulder and elbow surgery and research focus is on irreparable rotator cuff lesions, biceps tendon pathologies and instability. So today it's my great honor to introduce you to Dr. Luca Lachita from Berlin, Germany. Over to you, Luca. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and thanks for inviting me to talk about management of biceps pathologies today. Um, I want uh, to put the spotlight on uh, slap lesions, especially in young and high demanding overhead athletes as here, uh, yeah, there exists a big controversy on how to treat them. So the question in my talk today will be slap two lesions in overhead athletes. Should we be fixing them and how? For that, we have to recap the mechanics of injury, um, which uh, challenges our repair construct. And the most violent phases are the arm cocking and arm deceleration phase. We all know the principle of posterior super impingement introduced to us by Gilles Walsh with an um, engagement mechanically of the posterior aspect of the biceps anchor between clenoid and posterior rotator cuff, and also the so-called peelback mechanism described by Stephen Burkhardt and Ben Kipler, where we have high forces on our biceps anchor with a pull apart and also a twist mechanism. The most violent phase maybe is the deceleration phase we, where we have um, high eccentric muscle loads pulling on our biceps anchor and later on repair construct, what we have to keep in mind when treating these patients with surgery. So what are our management options in young patients showing up in our practice uh, with isolated symptomatic slap two lesions? I do believe we all agree that uh, non-operative uh, treatment should be our first line option. We need to rule out a uh, glenohumeral internal uh, rotation deficit, which uh, we can easily address with physical therapy. We also need to uh, focus um, our interest on possible scapular dyskinesia. Um, we need to improve. And uh, in my opinion, one of the key points in treating these patients is plyometric training, improvement of proprioception, and improving shoulder kinematics. But what do we do with patients who are not satisfied after conservative management? Um, in our practice, we want to have them practice at least for 10 to 12 weeks with a good physical therapist. Um, if they come again and still complain about um, pain and disability in performing their sports, then when we can discuss um, circle options. We have mainly these three options left. Option number one, preserve the biceps anchor, perform a slab repair. Option number two, perform a tenotomy and later on tenodesis supra or subpectoral. And option number three, the combination of both. So in our hands, um, we prefer a rotator cuff sparing slab repair. Um, as you can see here, this technique is what I learned from Dr. Millet in Vail, Colorado. We published uh, last year in Atroscopy Techniques. The advantage of this technique is due to new implants um, of all suture soft anchors and therefore curved drilling guides, we are able to reach even the posterior aspect of the labrum via the um, anterior superior and anterolateral porting without harming the supraspinatus tendon. Depending on our tear configuration, um, we place our anchors here like a standard slab repair 
with one anchor placed uh, in front and one anchor placed behind the biceps anchor. As you can see here, this is uh, one of uh, new anchor generation using knotless or suture anchors. Why do we use a knotless repair construct? That I will explain you in a minute. So let's have a look to biomechanics. Actually, it doesn't really matter which anchor type you use, solid anchor or suture anchor, um, all will provide a stable fixation. The limiting factor in slab repair, but also in uh, biceps tendons is a soft tissue with uh, sutures cutting through the tendon, what we need to respect. Now back, why knotless anchors? As you can see here by systematic review of Knappig et al. in 2020, they showed that the highest complications were observed in repair construct using a knotted configuration. That might be maybe due to um, an impingement of the knots with the superlaying supraspinatus tendon. Let's have a look to clinical outcomes. Here you see a study by Neumann et al. in HSM looking of results after atroscopic slab repair in overhead athletes showing an overall satisfaction over 90%, uh, reliable return to pre-injury sports level with 84% and that within less than one year. How does it look in biceps tenodesis? Let's challenge. Here's a study by Peter Chalmers et al. and Tony Romeo investigating return to play rate in professional baseball players and they showed even a similar return to play rate around 80%. But what's impressive here, if you have a look to pitchers, they only returned in 70% to the pre injury level, though that might um, yeah, suggest that these um, throwers um, need the anterior stabilizer in terms of the long head of the biceps tendon. And lastly, how are the outcomes of patients who got treated with both slab repair and uh, tenodesis? The combination of both procedures is associated with worse outcomes. So let's get back to biceps tenodesis versus slab repair. If you have a look through literature, you see that there are no significant differences in clinical outcomes. Reading through these papers, you will see that uh, biceps tenodesis is uh, more frequently used in older people with like maybe a more degenerative tear and slab repair is preserved for um, young athletes. However, a closer look, you will see this is actually not the population we are interested in with patients mean age around 40 or higher, I believe most of us will perform a biceps tenodesis. So the question still remains unsolved what to do with young patients under 35 doing overhead sports. The trend I just explained is proven by uh, the group of Tony Romeo and Rush Orthopedics. They showed in their study reviewing the American Board of Orthopedic Surgery database that slab repair is mainly performed in younger patients. And, but overall, the trend to perform a slab repair is decreasing. And that is maybe due to um, the risk factor H. Matt, Captain Matt Provencher, back in his former Navy times in Santiago, performed a study showing that H over 36 was highly associated with a chance of repair failure. Maybe the cleanest study out there is performed by Celine Schröder. Um, she performed a clinical randomized trial comparing slab repair, biceps team disease, and sham surgery. She was able to show that both procedures of slab repair and biceps tenodesis ended up in good to excellent results in 90% of patients. And she was able to show that tenodesis as well as uh, slab repair is superior in terms of revision rate when compared to sham surgery. So again, how do both procedures perform in young overweight athletes aged younger than 35? This question is still unsolved. Um, that is why we had a look to our own data. Um, this is what I did back in my whale times in Colorado. We looked at Dr. Millet's patients who had isolated lab two lesions symptomatic um, and got treated with either slab repair or tenodesis. As you can see here, mean age was 24 versus 28. 
And in the direct comparison of clinical outcomes, we did not observe any significant differences. A look to return to sports rate, you can see that this was not statistically um, significant. However, a slight trend towards a biceps tenodesis, but this trend was reversed when we looked at complications. We had one step shoulder in each group, uh, which need to be revised by an atroscopic atrolysis. We had one major complication in the biceps tenodesis group with a homo shaft fracture um, going through the tenodesis hole subpectoral and one traumatic dislocation occurred in the tenodesis group, which need to be fixed with a bony augmentation procedure. So let me conclude. Conservative management is our primary aim in these young OVAT athletes showing up with slab two lesions. Slab repair trends to be the superior circular procedure when we have a young patient population uh, performing OVAT sports. Technically, we should aim for a rotator cuff sparing approach using a knotless configuration and in and when we consider performing bicep stenodesis, we should have in mind that return to play might be compromised, especially in throwers who need the anterior stabilizer. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm excited for the upcoming discussion and your questions. Thank you, Luca, for that uh, fantastic presentation. Very brief and crisp. A uh, couple of questions. Yes. Uh, do you follow the Snyder classification when you talk about uh, SLAP? Um, yes, mainly. Depends, like in the OR or in, in diagnosing or... I mean, for us, the, the, the most important when we are intraoperative performing atroscopy is how the tissue looks. If it has like a degenerative attitude, like a lot of fraying where you don't have, doesn't look like healthy that it will heal. Yeah. Then we are more aggressive and do a debridement. Maybe if you have like a, a bucket handle, we fix the ring to keep the integrity, but also perform a tenotomy and depends on patient age, additional tenodesis or just leave it Tenotomized. Yeah. But last week we had a, a, a patient, he or she had a um, dislocation with a huge uh, ventral um, banquet lesion going up into the slab. And this slab looks very solid, healthy, like really juicy. And um, then we, yeah, actually we go after the Snyder classification and she got a banquet repair like up into the slab region with uh, one anchor also posture to the biceps anchor. Okay, and what is your primary determinant for whether you're going for surgery or not? Is it age or the patient symptoms? I mean, how do you it, really determine that? It's, it's the patient, yeah. Every patient is different. Um, we, we talk a lot about expectations that people are not uh, disappointed, especially in lab repair. Um, you have reports that um, patients remain painful because the slab region is highly innervated by nervous structures. And if you suture it, um, people remain painful. That can be happen. It can happen that it won't heal. Um, and you need to revise it in a second surgery. That's all what you need to discuss with your patient. And then it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's up, to, up to the patient actually. We inform and, them. Yeah. Hmm? yeah, and when you talk about pain relief per se, do you think biceps stenodesis is a better procedure than repair? Because you, we have seen even in large uh, hmm? repairable cuff tears, like what, you, which is one of your primary research focus, a bi simple biceps stenodesis would relieve the patient of symptoms. Yeah, I mean, uh, you are right. Uh, tenodesis is more maybe the more reliable technique. Um, they get actually pain free and you, you are sure one of the pain generators is, is away. Um, but um, like Peter Chalmers showed, we do see some um, difficulties with tenotomy in overhead athletes. Um, and we are currently um, doing a study to see if we can also see like degenerative changes 
in x-rays actually after tenotomy of the biceps and tenodesis because the, in our opinion the biceps tendon has a role in the shoulder it's not like um, the appendix of the shoulder uh, which you can cut out um, so that's still a question unsolved and um, if possible we try to preserve it but not for any price yeah and what do you think are the long-term outcomes of an untreated uh, slap? For example, if you go conservative, and what do you think the patient could develop in future if you do not treat it surgically? I mean, it's it's a little bit like the meniscus on the knee. Yeah, you have a tear. This can increase. It can go farther into the labrum ring. Um, I mean, if if you're considering only tenodesis, I do believe you don't lose time, you can wait. The worst case is you, you cut the biceps tendon like you would do anyhow, anyway. Um, if you consider a repair, I would go in earlier that it don't become degenerative and bigger. So these are my two thinkings on how to approach it. Thank you, Luca. I think that's all the questions that we have for this session. Fantastic lecture and really you have addressed into the real problems of SLAP. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you for having me. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.